Now that we're familiar with the steps in free radical polymerization, let's take a closer look at the kinetics of each of these processes. And as a starting point, I just want to remind you how we can talk about uh, chemical reactions. So you can imagine that there's two chemical species, A and B. Uh, these react to form two products, C and D. And so the capital letters uh, represent uh, these chemical species, uh, A, B, C, and D. And these species are present at some stoichiometric quantity. And so the lowercase letters, A, B, C, and D, are the stoichiometric coefficients that express how much or how many uh, molecules of A, B, C, and D are involved uh, in this reaction in order to balance uh, the stoichiometry. And this process occurs with some rate constant K, which gives us an idea about the speed uh, of this process. With this framework, then, we can express the overall rate of reaction in terms of a product of the rate constant and the quantities of the two reactants, A and B. Uh, so you can have K times the concentration of A times the concentration of B. So A and B in brackets represents the concentration uh, of each of these species. And each of those are raised to a power that's equal to their stoichiometric coefficient. So this gives us an expression for the overall reaction rate. Then we can talk about the rate of production, for example, of a particular species that's involved in this reaction. So for example, product C you can say the rate of production of C uh, is equal to the rate of change of the concentration of C with respect to time. This is then equal to the rate of reaction times the stoichiometric coefficient associated with species C. So CK times the product of reactant A to its raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient times the concentration of reactant B raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient. Notice that because C is a product, uh, its concentration is increasing with time, so we expect this rate of production to be a positive uh, quantity. We can also talk about the rate of consumption of, for example, reactant A. So the rate of change of concentration of A with respect to time, uh, again, is equal to the rate of reaction times the stoichiometric coefficient A. Notice here that since A is a reactant, it's being consumed as the reaction progresses. So we expect this rate of change of the concentration of A with respect to time to be a decreasing or negative quantity. Okay, with this in mind, now let's take a look at these individual steps in the free radical polymerization process. Remember, the first step was initiation. Here, there's two parts of the process decomposition of the initiator molecule to form uh, species that have this free radical uh, active site, and then a second part of the process that involves transfer of that radical to a monomer uh, to create a growing polymer chain. This is expressed by a rate constant K sub D, which is the decomposition rate constant. Uh, and remember that when we're talking about homolysis, uh, uh, which are some of the most common types of initiation that those occur uh, or are driven by uh, addition of heat or light uh, to break the chemical bonds uh, that produce the radical species. So we made two observations before. This first step, the decomposition step, is the slow part of the process or the rate limiting step. So this is what will be involved in expressing the overall kinetics of this process. Also, since the second step, the transfer of the radical to the growing polymer chain is a fast process, we can say that the uh, rate of change or rate of production uh, of this growing or active polymer chain uh, is equal to the rate of consumption of the uh, radical species that were produced by the dissociation or decomposition step. So then, in terms of a kinetic model, we can express the rate of initiation uh, we want to track the rate of production of monomers that are active uh, or active chains. Uh, and we can do that as follows, since that's equal to the rate of change of the uh, or rate of consumption of radical species. We can express that in terms of a rate law based on this rate limiting step, where that's two times uh, the decomposition rate constant 
times the initiator concentration. And the factor of two, remember, comes in because it's the stoichiometric coefficient. Each initiator mo molecule decomposes to produce two uh, radical species. Okay, so if we talk about thermolysis, which is probably the most common type of initiation uh, that you might encounter, uh, by convention, we typically also add an additional parameter called uh, the efficiency factor, denoted by lowercase f. This efficiency factor represents the fraction of the radicals that are produced that actually go on to successfully initiate polymerization. Some of those radicals may become inactivated or transferred uh, back to other species uh, in the chemical mix uh, before they have a chance to uh, combine with a monomer and create an active chain. Uh, and, and the efficiency or the, the, uh, that process can be anywhere from 30 to 80 percent uh, for typical reactions. But basically we add this factor to uh, account for these kinds of uh, these kinds of processes, and we end up with the following overall rate law for initiation. It's 2 times the efficiency factor times the rate constant for decomposition times the initiator concentration.